take me out to the ball game. Hey guys, check this out. A little book, you know, baseball is about to start, so I thought I'd uh, have a little bit of a, a, you know, Fenway Park behind me. Get my Cuba hat on. Why? Because I decided to do a little book review, right? This book right here, The Pride of Havana, History of Cuban Baseball. Now, um, there's been a lot of Cuban players through the years. More recently, uh, the Jose Cansecos of the world, Rafael Palmero. Um, but this book was really cool because it talked about the history, the rich history of baseball in Cuba. Um, it goes through from the very beginning in the late 1800s all the way through um, present, mainly from the beginning all the way through to about 61, 62, because uh, when Castro took over, uh, eventually got rid of uh, professional baseball and um, turned it into more of a quote unquote amateur league. But this book was pretty cool because it went through it and in the, the part that I really enjoyed was talking about the 40s, the late 40s from like 45 to, to 51 or two. And during that period, to, period of time, you had, uh, especially in, in the mid to late 40s, the Negro Leagues, the Mexican Baseball League, and the Cuban League were pursuing major league ball players and major league teams didn't want to have their guys playing there uh, even though it was at a different time of the year it was in the winter um, but these guys were also getting paid really well uh, something that I learned uh, from this author his name is uh, Roberto Gonzalez Echevarria it, it, really good book and he uh, he put in a lot of effort into it uh, he, his family knew a lot of players, a lot of people. And uh, one of the things that I thought was pretty neat was I had always thought Cuban baseball had a lot of teams in the on the island, but it actually was only four teams, and uh, which was pretty cool. And la one of the, the last teams that was part of uh, Major League, or not Major League, but Minor League Baseball, or professional baseball in Cuba were the uh, Havana Sugar Kings. And um, when you read this book, you see the tie between uh, Cuban baseball and the Washington Senators. And we're talking about the original Washington Senators who are now the Minnesota Twins. Uh, so uh, for instance, Tony Oliva, he, uh, to me, he's a Hall of Famer, but that's my opinion. Uh, Tony Oliva played with the Twins in the 60s, uh, Cuban ball player, and uh, obviously, and uh, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of really cool stories, and it talked about how uh, Max Lanier, the, in, in, if you're an Astros fan, you're familiar with that name, because he was a manager of the Astros in, I think, the 90s. And it was Max Lanier Jr. And the cool thing is my dad was talking about Max Sr. And it turns out, yeah, he, he played with the Cardinals. He was a big Cardinal uh, ball player. And he would play with the uh, – he would play in the Cuban League. And, um, and it, was, it was actually pretty cool, uh, some of the stuff and the stories they talked about. Uh, side note, as a Cuban author – Something that he said that I thought was, that kind of cracked me up. If you're from Cuba, you don't call them the Castros. You say Fidel, right? Whenever you're, whatever opinion you may have. And <laughs> I don't have a very good opinion of that SOB. But anyway, I digress. So Cubans call them Fidel. Everyone else calls them Castro, right? But, um, and... One of the things that I thought was uh, pretty neat about it, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, uh, Negro League players, uh, the connection with the Cuban League uh, is very, very strong. And same with the Mexican League, too. Um, the, uh, 
one of the best pitchers ever in the Cuban league or Cuban pitchers, period, is uh, Louis Tiant Sr. Louis Tiant Jr. pitched for the Boston Red Sox. That's why I got the background here of uh, Fenway Park. And, um, and in 75, when Louis Tiant pitched in the World Series, uh, they tried to get his dad to come, and, and the government wouldn't let him. And then finally they did. And I can't remember which game he actually threw the first pitch. But uh, there's such a rich history of baseball in, in, uh, with Cuba. And uh, so anyway, just uh, taking a little bit of time to do a little book review here. If you're interested in some history, you love baseball, and you're curious about the Cuban involvement in baseball, this is actually a pretty good book to read. Um, it's about 375 pages. I finally read the book, finished it off, and I'm ready for some baseball this year. Coming up, I think, on the 25th, if I'm correct. Play ball! <laughs> Have a good day.